Welcome to my ELM test prep series. I'm James. This particular episode is dealing with multiplication. Primarily we're looking at multiplying without a calculator because that's the requirement in the ELM test. No calculator. So let's look at a traditional kind of operation here. We're going to multiply 25 by 12 or 12 times 25 or 25 times 12. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this first digit here and take 2 times 25. Well I could go 2 times 5 is 10 and carry it. But if I notice 2 times 25, if I kind of think ahead, 2 times 25 is really just 50. Well I can get away with that. Since I don't have any other digit out here to worry about, uh, I can just say 2 times 25. Well now the question is, I've got a 1 here times 25, but I have to be careful here. I am moving over this digit. This digit is really a 10. So if I'm going to consider multiplying 1 times each of those digits, I'm going to have to come over this initial position, the same so that they line up under the number that I'm multiplying with. So 1 times 25 is 25. Now I can go ahead and add the 25 and I have to look at this and say oh well there's nothing there so I call it a 0. So 0 plus 0, 5 times 5 is 10, carry the 1, 300. Alright, so that's a traditional method and there's obviously some cautions here and I might have played a little bit of, I might have gotten good at this and said okay 2 times 25 is 50, and can I know that this is 10, so 10 times 25 is 250, and then I can add this and get 300. But if this were something more complicated, if I had an additional 3 out here, now I'm looking at some bigger numbers. And I have to say, well, 2 times 325 is, oh, 650. Well, 2 isn't too bad, but if this had been a 7, now I'm in real trouble because I don't know what 7 times 325 is. So now I have to go through digit by digit by digit. 1 times 325 is not too bad, but certainly 7 times 325, I don't have a clue. So I'm going to have to work it out digit by digit. And I want to be careful of my carries. 7 times 5 is 35. 7 times 2 is 14. I had a carry of 3. 14 and 3 is 17. I have a carry of 1. 7 times 3 is 21 with a carry. That's 22. So here we get into this business of keeping track of our carries and the manner in which we want to keep track of them. Now some people like to put them down below here. Others like to put them up above and then just add them from up above. But obviously we have some difficulties with the traditional method. Well let's go back to Let's just take that same problem, 25 times 17. Well, wait a minute, we had, uh, what was that, 325? Okay, yeah, we can do that. Well, 325 is a really hard number, and this is obviously bigger than what you would probably get on your ELM. But I could break this down into 10 plus 7. Well, 10 times 325 is 3250. Now all I have to worry about is 7 times the 325. And I could break that into 300 plus 25 times my 7. Well, 3 times se three, 7 3's are 21 with 2 zeros, so there's 21 with 2 zeros. And then 7 times 25, uh, 175. This so A to be 200, so 175. And now I've got 5, and there's 12, uh, 4, 5, and 5. So even though this is a fairly large number, I was able to utilize, initially break this up into 7 and 10, do the 10 portion, 
And then I was looking at 7 times 325. So I said, nah, I'm going to break that up. So I broke that up into 325. 300 is a nice number. 7 times that got me my 2100. And then I just had to worry about that. Well, 4 times 25 is 100. And 3 times 25 is another 75. So there was my 175 right there. Okay. Sort of a non-traditional method. Let's look at a little easier problem. 5 times 35. Well, I'm going to call this 30 plus 5. I'm going to multiply it by 5. So I'm going to multiply 5 times each digit. Well, 3 times 5 is 15 with a 0, 150. 5 times 5 is 25. And there's my 175 answer. Now, certainly this wouldn't be all that complicated in the traditional method. But this is just a way of quickly doing it and getting your answer and seeing the numbers fold out for you. Well, let's say we were multiplying by 10 times 34. Well, anytime we multiply by 10, we're just going to move the decimal point one place to the right, which means I'm just going to add a 0. So 10 times some number, 10 times 27 is 270. I just add one decimal place. Well, 10 is not too hard. Well, how about 20 times 34? Well, this is really 2 times 10 times my 34. Well, 10 times 34, well, let's do it this way. 2 times 34 is 68, right? And then 10 times that, I add a 0, and there's my answer, 680. So there's ways to work around these problems rather than use the traditional method. And breaking them up into useful parts can be helpful. How about 15 times 23? Well, okay, let's do it this way. Let's make this 20 plus 3 times my 15. Well, 20 times 15, that's 2 times 15 is 30 with an extra 0. So 30 plus the 0 is 300. So I've got the 20 done. 3 times 15, well, that's 45. And there's my answer, 345. So I could have broke it up. I could have said, well, let's make this 10 plus 5 times 23. 10 times 23 is 230. And then 5 times 23 is really half of that. So half of this would be 15, 115, 345. And again, I have my answer. OK. The thing is to be able to work with smaller digits in terms of our multiplication. Well, let's just try something else here. Let's try 45 times 65. All right. Well, I could say this is 40 plus 5. But 40 times 65 is still a little difficult for me. So I'm going to break this into 60 plus 5. Well, here I'm definitely going to use my properties of uh, distribution and essentially treat this as a binomial expansion. I'm going to take this times both numbers. Well, 4 times 6 is 24, and I have a 0 there and a 0, so I add two zeros. Then 5 times 60, 5 times 6 is 30, plus a 0, so there's 300. Okay, so the 60 is done. 5 times 40, 5 times 4 is 20, plus a 0, that's 200. And 5 times 5 is 25. And then all I have to do is sum that up. 2400, 2700, 2900, and 25. 29, 25, and I am done. That is a multiplication without a calculator, quick and easy. 
Now, I certainly could have done the traditional method here. I could obviously I can see a lot of uh, theories and, and keeping track of things. This seemed pretty straightforward. I didn't have to keep track of any carries. I could take each part. Now, I said at one point I said 40 times 60. Well, I took this. I took the leading digits. 4 times 6 is 24. I have a 10 here. This is actually 40. So I'm going to add a 0 and I have a 10 here, which is another 0. So that's one way I do this kind of operation. I'll just take the leading and then count the zeros and add those in. And if you want to check that math, grab a calculator and see how good I did. All right. So that is multiplication without a calculator. No calculator. And on the ELM test, that's what you're working with. You're working without a net. So if you're the kind of person that relies heavily on your calculator, here's a good time to think about practicing not using your calculator. All right. This is J I'm James. Have a good day.